Bones, you run over to your friend, to Archer, who's down. You can see now the several puncture wounds from the spider bites, and you can see his veins have started to kind of grow dark with the venom that flows through them now. And as you kneel down to try to administer some kind of help, any kind of help, you realize that the fire that has been singeing through the webs and just kind of um, smoldering the leaves has burnt out almost completely. And suddenly you hear it, that uh, skittering once again as the spiders start to return. So these spiders start to close in. You can hear them as they approach, and just now as you look off into the forest, you can see a couple of sets of eyes open up, and it is almost pitch black for you now because your lantern is broken, and it's your only source of light, and it's dark because you're traveling during the night, and it's murkwood. So these pinpricks, these tiny glowing orbs of light coming from the eyes of the spiders that are approaching you is the only light you have. As Bruce looks around, he starts to see those eyes, and he crosses his arm and just holds his hand up to his neck, taking his own pulse and breathing real deep. How fast is his pulse? It's cooking. It's my medical opinion. <laughs> you hear him just repeating to himself. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Stay calm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Bones turns to Bruce. We've got, we've got to get him on the horse. We've got to get out of here. I need your help. I can't do this alone. Bruce will turn and look at him and very calmly uh, walk towards where Archer is on the ground. Uh, and he's going to pick up his legs. So as you walk slowly and calmly towards Archer, one of the spiders careens out of the forest. It, you can see it as it kind of leaps into the air. And Raja turns and they kind of um, lock eyes for a moment at the spiders in the air and Raja staring up at the spider. The spider lands on Raja and they immediately go into this tumble, this kind of mad scramble that uh, throws dust, dirt, and stone up into the air. I'm going to take an attack roll on Raja. It's dark, but the spiders can see in the dark, so they do not get a setback die for it. Raja takes eight points of damage. He was already at nine out of 13. Pierce three. Yeah. And Venom. So as they continue to roll, and Raja's struggling back to his feet, is Raja still standing? No. Raja's he- going to take a critical, we'll have to roll that up in a moment. Uh, as they begin rolling around in the dirt, Raja continues to try to fight, and he's like clawing out, and he's biting at the spider, but the spider has the upper hand. It kind of wraps itself around his back and injects its venom into Raja once again. Raja takes the uh, burn two quality, and Raja will continue to take criticals as the venom uh, surges through him as well. Raja's critical is a 44. It's a fearsome wound. The target increases the difficulty of all presence and willpower checks by one until the critical injury is What level is that? It's average. So Raja is debilitated. And you see as Raja struggles back to his feet one last time, as he swings out at the spider, and the spider injects him once again, Raja falls into the dust. And the spider immediately starts pulling its webbing around him, starts grabbing him up and and coiling this sticky thread around Raja. Can Jasmine even see this? It's dark, right? He's close enough that you can see the silhouette of this occurring, which maybe makes it scarier for her. As Jasmine sees the spider jump onto Raja, she she calls out frantically, Raja! Raja! uh, Somebody help! I, I can't even see what's going on! Out of the corner of Bruce's eye, he catches uh, this silhouette of the spider over top of Raja and just looks at Bones with these fierce eyes and starts breathing heavily through his nostrils as he just does this massive, fast-paced sidestep over to the horse with Archer's body. So Bones, um, what was, I think, before more of a struggle for Bruce to pick him up has now become a lot easier, seemingly, uh, as Bruce either tries harder or gets stronger. I need uh, athletics checks from the two of you. Carrying him isn't the issue. The issue is getting him onto the horse and securing him fast enough. So an average is two purple, and then since, Bruce, you're assisting, you will throw a blue die into Bones' check, who is the primary. I feel like if we fail this, this is going to be season two right here. (laughs) That is. Uh, Bones has two success. 
So you do scurry him over to the horse and you're able to toss him up onto the back end of the horse and just now the horses start to come back into the clearing, this one that has been here all along and then the two others that uh, you rode in on as the spiders corral around them and kind of push them into this clearing with you. You put Archer onto the back of the horse, strap him down as quick as you can and he seems to be secure. How heavy is Raja? If he <laughs> leaves, what, what are we going to do? We're going to have to drag him behind a horse. <laughs> the, a I, don't, I don't really see any. I mean, Raja's down. Though things are looking dire, they almost always work out for Archer. So I'm going to take a story point back. Okay, so Archer's using almost always works out, which is his uh, human racial to once per session steal a uh, story point. So you can take it back. Now the players have three story points. GM has two. After putting Archer up on the horse, Bruce stares dead at Bones and says, Get Jasmine. Get her away from here. Run as fast as you can. And Bruce turns towards the spider over Raja and runs directly at it. Welcome to Melting Plot, an actual play podcast that features a cast of characters randomly selected from popular fiction. Each season, our heroes attempt to survive an apocalyptic scenario to find out how their characters might handle themselves at the end of the world. If you're new to Melting Plot, I recommend that you start at the beginning of the season so you can experience the story the way the players do. This is season two, and Middle Earth is in peril. Frodo was unable to destroy the One Ring, and Sauron's army covered the world in hatred and darkness. What little hope remains is tied to the fate of a few heroes willing to resist. But will it be enough? Bones. You see Bruce run at the spider. And now, as Bruce runs at this one spider attacking... Raja, you see several other spiders from either side of the path start to close in on Raja as well. And Bruce is running right at them. Can I do a discipline check? I think so. Uh, It's probably easier to hulk out intentionally than it is to not hulk out, right? Especially given your state. So we'll give it an average check, but you can take a boost die because you're already heightened. So I'm taking a boost die to my discipline check and now a success is turning into the Hulk rather than not turning into the Hulk. Is that correct? Yes, if that's the intent. Okay. Is this worth it? You because failed. I did fail. Bones, as Bruce runs towards the three spiders and Raja, what do you do? Bones calls out, what are you, what are you doing, Bruce? Get back! Seeing that there's no uh, persuading him, Bones runs for Jasmine. It begins pulling on her. We've, we've got to go. We've, we've, we've got to leave. Jasmine is in full panic mode at this point, seeing not only her tiger, but also Bruce running towards these spiders, and she, she'll she fight back. She's like, no, no, I can't leave them. I can't leave both of them. As she uh, seems to deny your help and look back, you see Bruce, and he, he like, hunches over, like, flexing, like uh, his back kind of lurches upward. He, um... Let's out what you, by his motion, assume should be a large roar, and instead it's just Bruce. It's a close-up camera right on his face, and he gets angry and then has that moment of, oh no. And he looks up, and the spider that's wrapping Raja is about halfway done now, and it continues its actions. But the two spiders that are collapsing on either side of the road now look at Bruce, and they close in on him. One of them leaps into the air, and the other one goes low on the other side of him. And you two watch this. As it happens, as the spiders collapse on Bruce. Nine points of damage, and um, you'll go prone. As one of them, the one that jumped, reaches in around and grabs your torso in your upper section, the one uh, that was going low wraps its legs around you as well and begins to uh, start to web you up. What you see from looking on is this writhing mass, and you assume it's the spiders as they're tearing Bruce apart, destroying him, because you see it in silhouette, and the spider that was wrapping Raja up now leaves and also jumps into the mix and begin biting, clawing, and gnashing at Bruce. But then suddenly, a bigger form emerges from what appears to be the ground underneath him, this massive ogre 
that kind of stands up and you can see its arms, its legs, its neck, its back that are much bigger than anything you have seen before. And these spiders now look dwarfed by its size as they crawl all over him. And standing on the path in front of you now is some massive silhouette. Jasmine watches as this form rises up from under the spiders and just, she can't really make out any details, but she's just staring. She has no idea what's going on. She's kind of in shock right now. She feels like she's losing everything and she just can't move. Bones is is the voice of reason in this situation. And he, he sees that Jasmine just is lost to shock, scoops her up around the waist and begins running as clumsily as, as he can towards the horses to try and get out of here. It's certain death otherwise. You get to the horses. Uh, Archer's slumped over one. Jasmine's on another. Do you ride with Jasmine or do you get on your own horse? I'm riding with Archer. Okay. So there's one horse empty. Jasmine's on a horse and you and Archer on, on the third. And you start riding them farther to the west, which actually will take you past this combat now occurring. Can I have a ride check, please? It's easy. advantage. I have two success. You have two advantage, so you fail? I fail. Okay. And Jasmine succeeds. So something on your horse is going to fall off. You're going to lose something as a result of this. So you spur it into motion. (laughs) Something. You have bags of food. You have weapons. Archer has weapons. Archer has a a pouch of coins. Tents. You have tents. So one of Archer's weapons slides off of him. So as you're riding, you don't notice this. But the scene, as you scurry around this combat taking place, pans back into these uh, deep kind of uh, craters that have been left in the ground from people's footsteps or horses or wagon wheels. And there's just a little bit of water in there as well uh, from the rain that's evaporating up. And the camera sees Archer's hand crossbow. Jasmine, you look at the fight, um, trying to see if you can recover anything. I mean, any hope that Raja or Bruce are alive, and all you see as you approach it is this massive what you what you think is green skinned monster tearing at spiders, throwing them off, ripping them uh, apart, but also getting bit and uh, struck as it does so. You don't see Bruce, and you barely see uh, Raja, but I'll take a perception check to notice something. It's hard difficulty. Three success and one threat. I think the threat and the success are all the same in this case. You recognize the eyes of that monster. The thing, the green monstrosity fighting the uh, spiders. Somehow, that's Bruce. Now you remember the chains in Forasside and you start to understand. So we see as the uh, three horses ride off to the west, just uh, skirting around the combat on the trail with the spiders and with the Hulk. We pan back and see the Hulk as he's fighting these three spiders. Hulk sandwiched in between these spiders is going to take the one in front of him, uh, on top of him, rather, and just kind of bring his arm down as an axe almost, like trying to just basically cut him in half. All right, so I've got a triumph, two advantage, and three more successes. Um, And at this point, I'd like to also spend four strain to use crushing blow, which gives it breach one. Um, (laughs) Which ignores all of its soak, okay. So, uh, damage will be nine, and then it has knockdown here as a special Yeah, you can buff. trigger knockdown with two, with two adva- uh, advantage. So, and that, that would trigger uh, if he's not. Yeah. You bring your fist down. You crush into this thing, and what felt fr- as Bruce, maybe in the uh, recesses of your mind, you remember how hard their plating was, to the Hulk feels like, like a bug. And you smash into it, and the whole body turns to pulp as it just flattens out, hits the ground hard, and the legs just kind of wither and uh, curl up on itself. And the blood and sinew inside start to squeeze out between the cracks in its carapace. Uh, Two spiders attack you. First one is going to hit you for six. 
Second one's going to hit you for six, and it's going to trigger Venom. So as the first one crawls up and it bites into your midsection, you can feel the fangs reach in. You grab it and pull it off of you before it can inject Venom, but the one that's on your back injects Venom through your shoulder, and you can feel it start to burn through you. So you will take um, the burn quality for two turns and take five points of damage each turn. Hulk is going to just tear off backwards, trying, and he's going to try to smash another spider against a tree. So you're going to just leap backwards and try to try to hit the one that's on your back into a tree and smush it that way. Okay, go for it. It'll just be brawl. Okay, so I'm going to do 10 damage with 3 threat. So the 3 threat are you're going to fall prone. So what you do is as you, as you thrust yourself back into the tree, instead of smushing the creature against it and it holding firm, it cracks in half and just kind of uproots itself from your weight. And you fall back over the tree, landing on your back, but the spider is gone. It's obliterated entirely. And the one that's in your hand now, the only one left, starts to frantically scurry. Its legs start to flap out wild as it tries to get free. It's going to just take its turn to try to, try to free itself from you. It's going to be its coordination versus... Versus your athletics. So what's your athletic? My athletics is going to be four red and a purple for you. Jeez. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not going to work. I don't have a despair. How do you want to kill this? <laughs> they can't fight back. This thing tries. It's got a despair. It's got so many failures. And three, two remaining threat. So it's trying to struggle out of Hulk's yeah, hand. Yeah. Bite at you a little bit at your fingers or whatnot, um, but mostly just try to wriggle its way, th- way free. So you see uh, the veins in Hulk's hands just kind of puff out, and he grins and just stares into its, into its many eyes as he just watches his fist slowly collapse, and the spider guts go out everywhere. <laughs> Standing there, now in the darkness, surrounded by uh, all the spider guts, then sees Raja on the ground. Raja doesn't appear to be uh, moving, may still be alive. And Hulk is going to go over to Raja and kneel down next to him and begin to pet him. So here's the thing with the Hulk, though. Um, the rules for the Hulk are that the Hulk has to attack anything near him or the thing that pisses him off the most. However... Uh, Zach can choose to use a story point to do a different action if he chooses to. So Hulk's still pissed, and Hulk still wants to smash. And Hulk wants to smash anything, including Raja. So are you giving me a story point to do this other action? I'll do it. So the three of you ride off and uh, continue on through the remainder of the night, and now your wounds and your fatigue is starting to drain you further. Jasmine, you've lost both of the things that you care about recently, and as you start to nod off from the fatigue of riding, you can hear uh, an echoing roar somewhere behind you, and you kind of snap back awake, and you think maybe that was just your dreams, but it could be real too. Bones isn't speaking so he cannot confirm nor deny it but that roar continues to echo in your mind through the next couple of days as you ride out of Mirkwood so you ride through the next day or so afraid to stop and Archer is clearly alive but um, comes to in waves and when he does the things he says are non-coherent the venom has worked its way out you assume but he has critical injuries that remain. The rain has gone away, and the day is more or less um, blue skies and easy riding. Bones, realizing that uh, they've been riding for well over a day, that the danger has passed and the skies are clear, uh, pulls his horse up to a halt. He dismounts the horse and begins untying Archer from the back of the beast, knowing that it's long past due to look at his friend's wounds. Archer, what critical wounds do you have? Archer's in really rough shape, um, so he's staggered, and he also takes strain for all of his actions. He's just, even if he was conscious, 
every movement is going to cost him something. He is... So even as he strains to do anything, so maybe as he comes to consciousness and you try to feed him, you can see that that causes him strain. So his critical is at the brink, which makes him suffer too strain when he takes an action. Um, He does have an easy critical injury as well. Um, which the effect of has worn off, but still has the critical injury on himself. So for uh, people who don't know how Genesis works, critical injuries continue to um, stack on a character. Even when the effect of those critical injuries ends, for example, he's no longer disoriented. The critical injury remains on him. So what that means is if he takes another critical, when he rolls on the critical chart, he adds 10 for each remaining critical injury on him, which makes him easier and easier to kill or to sustain even more grievous critical injuries. So he's currently suffering from two bones. You can see that and it's it's pretty bad. Despite the conditions being out in the field and out in the open, Bones knows that it's important to treat him now, even in less than perfect conditions, than to attempt to ride to He's not even sure where or how many days. So he is going to make a medical check to at least try and stabilize him and hopefully bring him to a condition where he can ride. Jasmine slows her horse down and turns it in a slow loop um, when she sees Bones stop. Um, And she uh, sees him taking a look at Archer and pulling Archer off of the horse and she hops off of hers. So she keeps riding like absentmindedly for another, you know, 30 feet or so before she even realizes that Bones isn't with her anymore. And when she turns back, he's already, you know, dismounted and pulling Archer off. You can feel this like tangible strain between the two of you who really haven't built any rapport up to this point. Jasmine is an absolute mess right now. She is exhausted. She's got dark circles under her eyes because she hasn't slept well, if at all. And she's just generally distraught with stress and worry about losing Raja and Bruce basically in a matter of moments Um, but she does turn around and hop off her horse and walks up to Bones and you can you can hear the strain in her voice she's her throat has been so tight and she just she hasn't gotten to really rest or relax so that strain is still there she comes up and she asks do you need any help I could certainly use it. These, these conditions aren't great, and, and he's in pretty bad shape. If you want to start taking his shirt off, I'll get my implements ready. Jasmine rolls her eyes slightly at the irony of the situation, and does so. As this scene takes place, we can see it from kind of a top-down angle, from far off. And you can see now, as you have left uh, Mirkwood and still been traveling for uh, quite some time, you have now reached the bank of the Anduin River, which runs north and south. On the west, the opposite side of the river, you can see the mountain range um, creep up into the horizon. And uh, as you start to make um, not so much camp, but just settle down so you can look at Archer's wounds, you can hear the flow of water from the Anduin, at least a source for fresh water. But uh, as you look at his wounds, you realize they're pretty grievous. Um, And you don't have a medical kit as far as I know, right? Because it it was in the, the wagon that... Barry was in. I do have it because we did make a comment about needing to write things down in our personal gear, and I did write down my medical bag. Okay. Bones heads back to the horses, knowing that the horse that he was on did not have his medical bag, praying that the horse that Jasmine has been riding is the one that contains all his medical gear. As he reaches it, he sees a familiar bag on it. What's his bag look like? It is like the most stereotypical brown leather doctor's bag with uh, kind of brass cuffs on it. Yeah, I'll be to hell. Oh yeah, probably bears the marking of some sort of military insignia that's long past unreadable. You pull the bag out. Seems to be intact. You return to Archer. He knows he's not going to have anything to sterilize the tools, so he just begins trying to set the bones, so shut some of his larger cuts Stabs, piercings from spiders, trying to wipe him down to see where, what's dirt, what's dried blood, because at this point he's pretty much just covered. He still has wounds that are bleeding even. Jasmine would go get water from the river and help out. So Jasmine continues to run water back and forth, and you're able to clean him first. And as you begin to patch him up, this takes a good amount of time, the better part of the rest of the evening, um, to 
to do this because it's a significant uh, medical procedure to try to get him cured. So are you, so there's three things you can do here. You can try to treat his wounds and strain. You can try to treat his um, easier critical injury or you can try to treat his more severe critical injury. You can do all of these three things. So what order do you want to do those in? Let's just go right for curing his wounds and his strain to start with. Which will actually bring him back to consciousness. Archer's current wounds exceed his wound threshold, so the difficulty is three purples. You have your medical bag. Are there? Do we think there's any difficulty because of the um, conditions? Because he's basically sitting on the side of a road? I think so, yeah. Uh, a setback die, probably? Um, or is that an upgraded difficulty? Uh, I think it might be a setback die because we also have the tent and stuff, so we could set up a surface for him. Okay, yeah, so there's a setback die because you're next to the road. Three purple, one setback. Oh, wait, you have um, knack for it for medicine, right? It does apply a setback die, but you get rid of it. And take a blue die because Jasmine's helping you. Perfect. So he's also going to use surgeon, so he's going to heal one extra. So he I has have two in surgeon, right? Oh, ranks two. So he's going to heal an extra two points on top of my one success. And then he'll heal three strain for my three advantage. Okay, so he's going to heal three wounds and three strain. I am conscious. For a couple of hours, (laughs) bone starts to work on, on you and you're in and out of consciousness. By the end of this general period of caretaking, you do come to enough where you're able to stay conscious so now like the flashes of memory that you think you had for the last day or so kind of solidify um, the only thing you can't quite place is um, this horrible image of some green ogre fighting spiders you're under a bright blue sky you can hear the rush of the river to your left as it kind of flows subtly Archer, actually, as he's coming to, he happens to come to while Jasmine is kind of leaning over and uh, and tending uh, to him. You see? I knew you couldn't keep your hands off me. Jasmine just gets up and walks away. Wait! Come back! I... What happened? Bones! 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 Archer hasn't even bothered to lift his head, doesn't realize that Bones is actually right there. <laughs> yeah. And Bones... Just gets the tiniest bit of a smirk if you were looking at him and sets the broken bone in his leg. (laughs) (laughs) You hear this really deep snap. Ah, You butcher! Now you realize, Archer, how wounded you are. Like, everything hurts. That Obviously, he just set your bone and that is killing you. Um, But... Even as you try to raise, maybe, to see what's going on down there, you realize how wounded you are, like, how out of sorts you feel. What the hell happened? How did we even get out of that mess? We didn't all get out of that mess. And now you look over and you can see um, Jasmine as she's walking back to the river, slowly. And there's an air of despair about her. Where's Uber Nerd? He's gone. He rushed the spiders so that we could get out of there. Save your life. What did he expect to do? He rushed the spiders? I think he expected to do just what he did, and he saved your life. Oh, good man. It's now that you realize that you're missing your crossbow. <laughs> where's, where's, my, where's my crossbow? What happened? I, I think you packed it on the wrong horse. We're short a horse, too. And the cat. And the cat is gone? Shh. I mean, Even... As you shush him, because you're in an open valley, you can hear the echo of it, and it reaches Jasmine, but the cat is gone. Bones, I'm in rough shape here. Have you done everything that you can do? I'm getting there. I'm I'm getting to the point where I've done as much as I want to do. (laughs) Oh, sheesh. Your bedside manner could really use a little improvement. So you have two criticals remaining on Archer. You can try to, um, you can try to. Yeah, uh, Bones is going to try and work on the, the stagger, the easier of the two criticals. Okay. So that's um, one, just one, one purple. purple. The other one's. The uh, wow. Yeah, I have five success. Why can't you, <laughs> can you get five success when you're healing my wounds? <laughs> So your um, he will he will uh, remove your easy critical. This takes um, 
not as much time as patching up his wounds. You um, maybe wrap his head uh, where he seems to have some abrasions, and you can see that he's probably got a concussion that will wear off now within the next couple of days. But you're afraid to move him for that greater injury that he's sustained. Uh, however, it does start to approach night now. You realize you've been traveling for um, really the night where the spiders attack through the next day, and this is the following night. So it's been, you know, a- approaching maybe 18 hours um, since you've had any kind of rest or food. Thankfully, due to the merchant you found last, um, well, a couple of nights ago, you do have food. And now, since you're not feeding Raja and Bruce, you've got quite a bit more. We probably don't have any extra food, because we're also short of horse. So as the night reaches you, do you want to continue working on... So again, you don't have a light source, uh, unless you make a fire. Um, I I think compared to Mirkwood, I think where we're at would seem super safe. I, I don't even think we'd really think twice about starting a fire. Yeah, I agree. I, I mean, Mer- also... Mirkwood is still on your to the east of you. You are on you're between the Anduin and Mirkwood, so you can see the forest. Um, but you're far enough out from it, probably ten or so miles from the edge of Mirkwood and um, closer to the Anduin at this point. So you do feel fairly secure here. If you'd like yeah. to, yeah, yeah, we'll I definitely think... put up tents, start a fire. Okay. And do you continue to work on um, on Archer? It's getting pretty late. There's not really anything for me to lose by trying to work on him. No, the only thing I'm thinking is, because this is such a severe wound, it's going to take a long time to fully deal with this. So if you start now, it's going to take you through the better part of the night, as opposed to starting in the morning, um, where you have the day. Really, it doesn't... Mechanically, it doesn't matter. It's more for narrative. I don't think he'd press on through the night. I think even just the stress of being worked on all day... Uh, would probably be pretty fatiguing for someone in his condition. So as you set up camp, you have two tents. Do you pitch them both? Yeah, because they're only meant to hold two. Yeah, so you pitch both tents. You put Archer in one of them, and you build a fire as the night comes. And the sky remains blue, and you can start to hear those crickets as they begin chirping, and the soft pop of the fire starts to echo across the ravine. It's uh, fairly comforting, actually, and you're able to um, remove your strain through the night if you have any. However, there's a question of where to go now. I think this all enters with bones coming back from the river, washing off the blood and and grime from working on Archer all day and dragging him through the dirt and things of that sort. He sits down next to the fire and just very matter-of-fact just looks at Jasmine and just says, I- I'm sorry. Jasmine slowly kind of just shrugs. You can tell that she's really, really struggling to keep any sense of of control over her emotions. And she's got like a thousand yard stare. And she deliberately doesn't look at you. She just keeps looking at the ground and gives this shrug and, and just says, I don't even know what to do. I have never been without Raja. And... With Bruce gone, I don't... I don't know how to help my father. I just need some time to think. I don't know if I can explain it, but I, I... I don't know that Bruce is dead. That thing, I think it was him. I've, I've seen it in his eyes before. The man's a monster on the inside. When I first met Bruce, he was in those chains because he said that he wanted to protect people from himself. I think that was what he was talking about. But I I don't I still don't know if he could have survived that. And and Raja's still gone. He was it, that spider looked like it was eating him. I just maybe maybe Bruce did turn into that thing and and maybe he'll turn back if he knew he could turn into it once. I don't know, but it, He's still gone. Whether he's alive or not, I think we still have to continue on. If if Bruce is alive, that's that's where he'll go. He's going to meet us in Fanglorn. Jasmine nods, um, but doesn't say anything further. From this point on, you've got about 15 days ride to get to Fanglorn. And Archer certainly shouldn't be riding right now. With his recovery time, which is going to be about a week, if you're even able to 
to cure him of his um, severe critical injury, it's going to be the better part of uh, 20, 25 days to get there. So you sleep, and the morning rises. I think Bones is going to be up kind of first light type of thing. And Jasmine would have told you to wake her up with, with you as well. She does not sleep well because she's not used to being on the road and not having Raja at this point. So she's like in the tent by herself without her tiger, just like crying herself to sleep. So the first light of the day creeps up. And it uh, rises above the trees. And you can see a subtle mist that kind of flows out from Mirkwood now, probably due to the rain and the evaporation of it. Um, and you're glad that you're not, you're not there anymore. Uh, because even from this distance, it looks eerie and horrible. Imagine you get to work on Archer. So this procedure will take a good amount of time. So you set out your things uh, in the tent. You make Archer as comfortable as you can. Some of it requires some minor surgeries. Some of it requires setting more bones or simply tending to uh, the wounds that, that are still bleeding or stitching up the larger of his wounds. Need a medicine check, please. With Jasmine having quick learner, can she spend a story point to upgrade his check? Because Okay, so what she can do, she could use Quick Learner on herself mm -hmm. for medicine. Yep. And then if any of her ranks or her in intellect are high enough, you could then grant that to Bones. Yeah, but I don't, I don't think. think that's going to do it because Bones will be smarter uh, and still have higher medicine. So you could use it that way, but in this particular yes. case, uh, it, won't, it won't grant additional bonuses other than just that boost die anyway. So it would be a waste. Yep. Okay. I think I'll burn a story point. So you're upgrading the um, check. Okay. Three success, two threat. So the threat's going to add additional time to his recovery, but uh, you do, you do uh, cure him of this. So you can remove that critical injury as well, Archer. Um, this is going to take probably just under 10 days for him to fully recover. Um, you, can in, you can decrease that time if you get him to more comfortable establishments. And as luck would have it, you do know of a city to the south of you, probably a day or so ride. Uh, it's fairly new, this city. It's crept up within the last 20 or so years. What's it called? Brackenshore. I like, I like that. that. That's good. Brackenshore is good. Heading to Brackenshore would only take about a day. Jasmine walks into the tent with uh, uh, fresh um, water skin of water from the river and uh, hands it over to Bones and asks, how's he doing? Oh, he's doing just fine. I didn't. After he got left bleeding out through the night because Bones got tired and didn't feel like fixing my critical wounds. That's how he's doing. He's back to normal. Well, he should be lucky you survived. Uh, yeah, Archer doesn't even notice the the edge in that in that dig. It's just like this is ridiculously uncomfortable. It hurts to even lie here. Couldn't we go somewhere better than this? Even as he talks, and you realize maybe socially he's back to normal. As he tries to move, you see how much it's straining his body. And uh, Bones has put like casts on him. He's uh, one of his arms in a sling. He's wrapped up fairly heavily. So, um, so yeah, it looks like he's probably on the mend, but he's got a long recovery time in front of him. There's a city a, a day or so away from here, I think. Um, I know it was just outside of Mirkwood. Um, I don't know if he's in any shape to travel, though. I think that's going to be up to you. No one's going to care about us. So no one's going to recognize us. You're the one who's hiding from someone. I don't think any of the people looking for me are in that city. And if we see that bird, I don't know. Well, then I guess oh, I then thought I thought Archer hit that when he shot it with an arrow. Archer realizes the dig and he's like, oh, well, at least I tried something. If you think that we should go there to speed up his recovery, then I think we could. It, it would certainly help. Can he, can we put him on a horse right now? Oh, sure, he's strapped into a horse's ass. Jasmine actually cracks the tiniest of smiles.
So you break camp and you load Archer onto the horse and you start heading south towards Brackenshore. Brackenshore is nestled into the Misty Mountains, uh, into the foothills. So you do have to cross the Anduin to get there. So you head south until you reach a bridge. You cross it and you head um, both south and west towards Brackenshore. And you can see um, signs for it as you get closer and closer and they kind of point you in the right direction. And it is nestled within the foothills themselves, so it's kind of built on um, varying levels of height and tiers. But when you approach it and you expect to see people there, you expect to see people greeting you or guards or hear the bustle of a town, you see none of that. You hear none of that. As you enter Brackenshore, you see what remains of a town that has been completely and utterly devastated by orcs or some other evil. Thank you for listening. If you like the show, please share us with your friends. One of the best ways that we can grow the show is through word of mouth. Another great way to support the show is through ratings and reviews. Every five-star rating and review that we receive helps others to find the show. If you'd like to connect with us, you can shoot us an email at meltingplotpodcast at gmail.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at Plot Melting. All music was written and produced by Zachary James Kolkman. Sound designed by Jeff Henders and Zachary James Kolkman. Jasmine from Aladdin was played by Rachel Kamstra. Bruce Banner was played by Zachary James Kolkman. Sterling Archer was played by Silas Sheffer. Leonard Bones McCoy was played by Tippett. And I'm your host, Jeff Henders. Thanks for listening, and see you next time.